at Redefined Horizons, we work really hard to provide our clients with billing that's both fair and transparent. And uh, we, that's something we take pride in. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't do like what a lot of companies do, which is they they'll go in and give the client a, a super low price and a, a bare bones scope of services, and then come back and and charge the client for a bunch of extras. That's that's not how we operate. So I I make a really good faith effort. My partner Danny does too. We try really hard to, to give the client an idea of what it's going to cost to get them across the the the, the uh, finish line for their project. And it's not just our costs, but other related costs, costs for other consultants, costs for permits and fees, construction costs, all the costs. Um, you know, we do the best we can. We, uh, we don't have, you know, we don't have a crystal ball. We can't see into the future. Um, but we'll we'll do the best we can to provide our client with realistic cost estimates. And uh, we work with other professionals to do that uh, when, when we're trying to estimate costs that are outside of our, our area of expertise. So we, we work really hard to provide billing that's that's transparent, co- you know, full costs up front and billing that's fair. You know, I'm not charging the client when we're training employees or doing things like that. So that's something that we work really hard to do. Despite that, I still get a lot of questions about our billing, which I understand, um, you know, a lot of a lot of questions. Uh, from prospective clients about why our our fees are what they are. And I understand why that happens. Um, There's a lot of reasons for that. I don't want to get into all the details about that in this video. Needless to say, we get a lot of questions about our fees. Um, Yeah, just kind of price range wise, um, I always tell people I am not the cheapest surveyor in town. Uh, If that's what you're looking for, uh, you need to call somebody else. (laughs) Uh, There's always guys that are willing to cut corners. Uh, Having said that, we're also not the most expensive surveyor in town. Uh, So we work really hard to to try and keep our overhead costs under control. Uh, My partner and I, we live live pretty simple lives. You know, we're we're not driving uh, luxury sports cars or, or living in mansions or anything like that. So uh, we're pretty humble people. We both we both come from humble backgrounds, and uh, and we we work hard to provide our clients with with what we believe is good good value for their money. But I wanted to to address a specific um, issue about uh, billing and and the fees that we charge for our professional services, and and it's it's this idea that my fees are based on more than just just my labor. Okay, so. A lot of people, especially if you come from the construction industry, if you have a background in construction, um, a lot of people just assume that the price, you know, the price of a of a particular project or service should be, you know, materials plus labor. You know, if you know your labor rate and how many hours of labor it should be, you should be able to figure out the price. And that does apply in a lot of a lot of situations. It's not the model that we use to price our professional services here at Redefine Horizons. And so I want to explain why that is. So our fees for any particular project or survey is based on much more than just our, our the cost of our labor, right? So, and, and even then, I tell people, I don't have anybody working for me, basically, <laughs> that makes less than $25 an hour. That's just, that's the wage I have to pay. Um, I, it's important that I pay, important to me and my partner that we pay fair wages, uh, that we pay competitive wages. We want to hire only the best people. And um, so we, we will at times have some entry level, uh, entry level people on a field crew or interns that, that make a little less than that. But that's, that's basically our floor is about $25 an hour. Uh, it's, and, uh, you know, even our, our entry level wages are somewhere between twenty and twenty five dollars an hour. So, and the, the cost of my labor goes up from there. So, my labor is already not what I would call inexpensive. Um, and I tell people, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to come to work for me, um, you, you can't be a monkey. You know, if you're going to come to work for me, no, 
no offense intended to monkeys, but uh, you know you're gonna come to work for me. Uh, you gotta have you gotta have your brain uh, plugged in, right? Uh, so you gotta you gotta know some math, some trigonometry, some geometry, some algebra, uh, maybe a little bit of calculus. Um, you gotta know how to run a computer. You know you gotta know how to run AutoCAD. You gotta understand some a little bit of statistics. Um, you gotta know something about the real estate market. You know I think those people are not. They're hard to find. It's hard to find people that, that kind of meet those minimum qualifications. And, and, you know, we try to hire good people and we train them, but you, know, you got to be pretty smart. You got to be pretty smart if you want to come to work for me as a, as a land surveyor. So my cost of labor is not low uh, by any stretch of, of that word. Um, but there's a lot of things other than labor that, that I got to think about when I provide a price. And we almost always provide lump sum pricing. Um, and I talk in, a, in another video about the different kinds of, of pricing methods, but we, we almost always do lump sum, which means we're giving you a fixed, fixed price for a bundle of services. We're taking on most of the risk there. Um, so that's, that's the type of, of, of pricing we use 95% of the time. Uh, we, we use lump sum pricing. And as a general rule, even though we try to provide transparent we try to be transparent and upfront about our billing, about what our services are going to cost. One thing I don't do is I don't provide detailed cost breakdowns either ahead of time in the proposal phase or after the fact with the bill. You know, you're not you're not going to get an invoice from me that explains how I spent um, every minute of my time on your job. Um, and there's some different reasons for that. It's just not necessary with lump sum billing. I told you what it was going to cost up front. I um, mean, it doesn't matter if I spend an hour or 10 hours. You knew what the price was going to be. We, we had an agreed price. Um, and it takes time. It takes time and energy to track all that time at that kind of granular level. And I, I, we don't do that. Uh, we do track our time, but we don't track it in one minute intervals. And um, if I were to do that, if I were to provide that kind of detailed cost breakdown, either in the proposal phase or with the bill, it just it misleads the client because... What I'm insinuating there, you know, is, is that I'm going back to the construction model or it's, you know, number of hours of labor at this labor rate plus, plus the cost of materials. That's not how I price our services here. That's part of it. I do look at the level of effort, but there's a lot of other factors that go into how we price our services. So what are those things besides the cost of labor? I'm going to give you five things that I have to think about when I provide you a price for a bundle of professional services here at Redefine Horizon. So number one, I gotta look at the level of risk. Okay, so every project has a different level of risk. Uh, every every survey I do here carries some risk with it. There's some liability there. There's a risk that I will get sued if something goes wrong or, or even, if some, even if I do my job right, I might still get sued depending on the circumstances. So I have to look at that level of risk. Um, so, but what's the likelihood of there being a conflict or a dispute in this situation? What's the likelihood that I might get sued? Um, what's the value of the property that's being surveyed? So if there's more risk when I'm doing a survey for an office tower than there is if I'm doing a survey for a farm as a general rule. So I have to look at that. Uh, what's the value of the land being surveyed? Who's going to use my survey? What are they going to use it for? All those things can influence the level of risk. The second thing I look at is the level of uncertainty. So a lot of times we don't know uh, how hard it's gonna be to survey a particular piece of property until we get out on the ground and start to search for evidence of the boundary location. So I have to look at that. Uh, you know, the, the more difficult it is for me to estimate the level of effort, the more uncertain things are, uh, the more the higher my price has to be to, to take into account that uncertainty. Uh, I also have to look at how difficult is this gonna be uh, this particular task, how difficult difficult is it going to be? You know, if we're if we're surveying across really rugged terrain in the mountains, or we're in the middle of the desert, or uh, you know, I'm in downtown San Francisco where there's five thousand people and my equipment could get stolen at any moment, or if you got a really nasty land description in your grant deed that hasn't been surveyed in two hundred years, I got to look at all that, right? How hard is this going to be? And that's related to how much labor it's going to take, but they're not they're not exactly the same thing. Uh, the fourth thing I look at is, you know, what are my costs to, to basically to run a real business, you know, an effective business? I'm not working out of my garage. Um, I, I have, you know, general business insurance, professional liability insurance. I buy 
good computers. You know, we have uh, $150,000 worth of survey equipment that has to be uh, paid for and maintained. Um, so I got to look at that. And then I also have to consider the fifth thing is I have to consider what is the cost for me to maintain my expertise. So, you know, most, most of what I'm selling is my brains, not my muscle. And uh, it takes continual effort to maintain that expertise that our clients need. You know, the laws are changing. Every year, the laws in California change, uh, the, the laws related to real estate. Uh, regulations change every year. Uh, real, the re regulations that govern real estate, the regulations that govern me as a land surveyor, those change. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, lawsuits all the time. <laughs> That I have to, you know, I have to stay on top of that, so I, I understand how that part of the law is evolving because that that affects my work and uh, the the standards that we have to uh, meet sometimes in our work uh, those change on a regular basis. So there's a huge investment of effort um, on my part and the part of my employees to stay current with the law and with regulation and with standards, um, and that's another cost that I have to think about. So. When, when you think about all of that, that's a lot more than just my labor, right? It's a lot more than just, you know, one man at $30 an hour for five hours is a hundred and, you know, $150 an hour. There's a lot more than that, that goes into uh, pricing my bundle of services for you. So that's why I don't provide detailed cost breakdowns on a, on a labor and materials basis. It's not the way I price work. It ignores all those other factors that I need to think about. Now, certainly if I give you, if you're a prospective client and I give you a lump sum cost for a, for a survey or uh, some related services and you call me and say, Landon, I don't understand. You told me this was going to be $20,000. You know, this guy down the street told me it was going to be $3,000. Um, you know, but you came highly recommended. Can you explain to me why am I seeing a difference in the price here? I'm more than willing to get on the phone and have that conversation with you. I can explain to you what factors went into my decision. Um, there are times when I might reevaluate the fee that we provided, uh, depending on the circumstances. I don't do that a lot. I do do it occasionally. Um, you know, as for an example, uh, maybe there was a misunderstanding between me and the client about exactly what the client needed and and after we, they see my proposal and they look at my fee, we get to talking and I realize, oh, hey, they don't need that uh, land description or they don't need that government application. And then uh, once, uh, once we're more clear on what the client actually needs, the, the fee can be reduced. But if you call here to get help, I am not going to give you a detailed minute by minute cost breakdown. That's just not the way my business works. So we provide lump sum costs that consider not just the cost of labor, but those other five factors. Again, the level of risk, the level of uncertainty, the difficulty of the tasks that we have to perform, my cost to run an effective business, and the cost of maintaining our expertise here. Right? That's what we sell. We sell expertise. That expertise has to be maintained. So hopefully that does a, a, a good job, I hope, of explaining uh, why our fees are based on more than just the cost of our labor.